Welcome back. Many of Oregon's most remote and beautiful wilderness areas are being loved to death. The hunt is on to track down the people destroying the environment. In this Team 2 report, Grant McComey tags along with patrols monitoring the state's most rugged backcountry in unique fashion. Game officer Adam Turnbow depends on his partner, Rocky, when it's time to saddle up for wilderness patrol. We can cover usually a little more ground. We can pack more equipment in, whether it be first aid kits. If we go in overnight, we can pack all our gear in. It's just a lot easier to do it on horseback. McFred provides the horses for the two-day trip. It's one of eight patrols that the team makes each summer. Like Turnbow, Fred sees problems as more people visit Oregon's wilderness areas. They can get it in, but they can't seem to get the stuff out. People don't use the uh, their shovel and get off the trail like they should. Uh, just, you know, they'll be snacking and dropping stuff as they go. Hi there. It's the state police. How's camping today or hiking? Turnbow says the Jefferson wilderness is especially popular and prone to problems. How's fishing today? Eh. I haven't been doing too much of it today. It's getting a little bit late in the afternoon now, you know. For the most part, it's some minor fish and wildlife violations where it would be no angling license or uh, hunting license, things like that, littering. And uh, we are generally only law enforcement in there. We had people come in with M80s, and they were, uh, it was it was crazy. And then you'd have guys coming in with these big coolers full of beer. And it was really doubly crazy. And we're really glad to see this. A lot of people are surprised. I mean, they, you know, you, you go back there for a two or three day trip, you don't expect to see anybody, let alone a trooper. Adam says that the Wilderness Horse Patrol harkens back to another era, but frankly, it's the only way to get around. The horses really make the job easy. Okay, fellas. The team covers tens of miles each day. They visit with each camper that they meet. All right, and you guys are familiar with the campfire restrictions, no campfires and all that. Oh, we okay. our stove. Outstanding. <laughs> they also check fire rings and keep watch for any sign of smoke. The big thing the Forest Service is concerned about are fires. Like right now, there's a ban. Yeah, you can't have one anywhere. But somewhere, someone does. And a uh, suspicious fire with a, possibly a cabin in there. Turnbow gets a call. A chopper points the way. He figures the easiest route and then backtracks for miles on the Marion Lake Trail. Within an hour, he finds the fire. Trees are still burning and a fire crew sprays down the flames. Don Galbraith points to where it started. It eventually crept out from those rocks and it did this. So it may have done this for days, if, we, if not weeks. This is more worrisome. An illegal cabin is being built on public wilderness. They show up everywhere. Due to its remoteness, Turnbow believes the structures for illegal drugs, and he bags up the scattered evidence. I'd love to find a day pack or something. The smoldering remains must be watched for days, and Turnbow needs help tracking down those responsible. He says the cost for all of this effort will be high. The cost is, is tremendous on what they did today um, with the helicopters and the manpower and then um, the damage just to the wilderness itself. And this just falls under what we do. I mean, whether it's checking a fishing license or assisting with the fire investigation, we just help where we're needed, and uh, we're just law enforcement, so we do what we can to assist. Invaluable and unique assistance protecting a pristine part of Oregon. In the Jefferson Wilderness Area, Grant McComey, K2 News. This is beautiful. The Oregon State Police Wilderness Patrols are funded by a federal grant. Without it, many of Oregon's most spectacular areas would be without any law enforcement.